So what is a far lateral microdiscectomy? You may have previously heard of a microdiscectomy. Well, my name's Anthony Gosh. I'm a consultant spinal neurosurgeon. And in this video, I'm going to explain this different procedure called a far lateral microdiscectomy, what the difference between this is and a standard microdiscectomy, and when we might offer this procedure. So let's briefly run through the anatomy of the spine using this model I've got here. These are actually life-size bones. So your spine is made up of a stack of bones called vertebrae, and that's what each of these things are. And a vertebrae consists of one of these cylindrical blocks of bone with an arch of bone attached to the back of it. So when you stack these on top of each other, you form a canal down the middle of the spine. So this is the front and this is the back. And then between each bone, we have these little cushions here called discs. And they're soft pieces of material, much like crab meat, quite squishy and soft, and allow a bit of shock absorption between the bones. They also create a little bit of a gap here at each level through which a nerve leaves the spine. Picture illustrates the standard microdiscectomy approach. So this is a cross section um, across the spine. So this is the skin of the back. This here is the front. This is the disc at the front of the spine, and this is the arch of bone at the back. And this here is the central spinal canal. Now, it's quite mo most discs, when they herniate, they herniate somewhere in the middle of the spinal canal, but towards one side, capturing or trapping the nerve inside the spinal canal. And therefore, the standard microdiscectomy approach is through or near the midline, between this bone here and the muscle with these retractors, we make a window at the arch of bone at the back of the spine and then shave away this fragment inside the spinal canal. Sometimes the disc doesn't herniate in the middle of the spine as described, it pokes out to the side here. The tear happens just to the side, it pokes out and it catches the nerve as it's leaving the spine, and that's what we call a far lateral disc herniation. So the way we approach this, if we have to operate on it, is very different to the standard herniation, which is called paracentral that we described earlier. So to get to here, a standard midline uh, incision re isn't really going to work. So what we do is, is an incision a bit further out from the midline, about four or five centimeters out, still very small, still a mini incision, and then with some retracting instruments, as we go through the muscle, we just move the tissues out of the way so we've got access to that disc there. Under the microscope, we um, can nibble some bone away from, from this joint here, just from the outside, just creates a little bit more space, but doesn't disrupt the joint. Move the nerve out of the way, protect it, and that gives us access to that disc there where we can shave it away, remove any loose fragments from the disc space, and then visually explore this nerve to ensure that it's completely free and decompressed. In terms of risks, these are similar to the standard microdiscectomy, and I've outlined those um, in the video linked below, but there are some differences. One of the risks we talk about in the standard microdiscectomy is paralysis from damaging all of these nerves here in the midline, in the middle of the spinal canal. Well, actually, if we're working laterally to the side, we're away from the spinal canal, so it's extremely rare that you're going to put these nerves here at any risk. The nerve that's at real risk is just the nerve that you're operating around. So any damage to the one nerve you're trying to free up can cause weakness in that one muscle group, for example, leading to a foot drop, a weak, a weak ankle, and in extremely rare cases, um, a, a paralysis of just that muscle group. Um, fluid leak of the spine is a is a risk, but probably not as I'll probably not quote it as high um, as with the standard approach because we're working we're working away from the main lining of the spinal canal there. In terms of recovery, I normally mobilize people straight away with the physiotherapy team. When standing up, you will experience some pain in the back towards the side uh, that we've done the microdiscectomy on, and that's mostly from the muscle. Over the next few days and weeks of mobilizing and moving, that will reduce and get better and better. Theoretically, the leg pain should improve straight away because the pressure has come off the nerve. I normally advise two weeks off work 
just to let things settle down. But in that time, I actually expect you to walk around and do the exercises that the physiotherapists have taught you. And then, especially if your job is office based, I usually advise a four week period of a phased return, just increasing hours week by week until you're back into the full flow of full time work. I really hope you found this video helpful. If so, please click that like button and subscribe to the channel. And please feel free to visit us at SpineMDT.com. We'll be very happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you.